Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the finale of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 1 on the Insane Collection. We have one more level left, at least for the purposes of our playthrough. We would have two levels left if we were getting all the clear gems for the 100%. But as is, uh, this is our final level before the final boss. This is Cortex's laboratory. And there's still a couple of gimmicks left to be seen. Uh, this one has a particularly treacherous enemy type, along with these uh, these Tesla coils that we've seen before, and the uh, opening and closing floor grates. Along with that, uh, a lot of the doorways and... Ooh, I didn't think I was going to make that. And uh, some of the, the floor grates are controlled by uh, switches. That door ahead, for instance, is controlled by that exclamation mark uh, switch. Just wanted to make sure that the floor was not going to open up underneath my feet when I stepped into the next room. Uh, and that will be a bonus room pretty early in the level. And without a checkpoint as well. I think the gimmick of this one is that you can get up here. Yeah. There are actually two crates that you could hear. You have to curve around the, the top uh, jump crate. <laughs> Wait, I'm off. I'm at four on this one? Five. For being, uh, I guess, the penultimate level, if you want to count the Great Hall, the one that's only a level if you're doing 100%, that's a really simple, straightforward bonus level. Uh, these guys fucking suck. Ooh, we did manage to jump around him, though. That's generally how I like to go about dealing with them. Uh, I spin them to shut them down for a second uh, after the, the electricity in their black power fists wears off. And then uh, you just have to try to jump around them because the electricity keeps flowing. This dude is no threat at all. Yeah, the electricity keeps flowing from the gauntlets. Oh man, the Black Power Fist from Boondocks or the gauntlet from Lucha Underground. Either one, take your pick. That thing crackles with sexual electricity too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that death animation. That's a pretty good one. Uh, here, we're safe because we can just jump into the middle of the floor. Not sure why the TNT shows up this time. Well, that's fine. Also opens the door for us. We have to time the floor opening, the lightning on this dude, and the lightning from the Tesla coils. I think I fucked that up. Yeah. This guy is a real pain to get around. He takes a little bit of doing. So the thing that you have to watch is the electricity that keeps sparking up, even after you've spun them. Uh, it, that's what makes him a little bit complicated. That room in general is a little tough. Uh, and then this one is no slouch either. Also, if you get caught under a door that's about to close, that will crush you and kill you. Another slime is going to spawn. we got to bait him. I was worried I was not going to make that. Oh, shit. Uh, what's my... Damn. I was just about to ask, what's my timing there? So we have to do this again, which is a problem. But not that big of one. Uh, again, I just find this room to be pretty fucking tricky. I think me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. He can get another kill on me yet. I say, yeah, because I could still die in any of the upcoming <laughs> rooms very easily and then just be stuck on him for a while. Probably not. No, probably not. It's all good. I didn't ask for this curse. I never asked for this power I, that I have. It was just given to me. Oh, third time's a charm. I'm blessed with it and cursed with it at the same time. Jesus. 
Is there ever any point where I can use this this gift that I've received to my advantage? No, right? Oh god, I better not get crushed by the door. Uh, uh. <laughs> And then it would just be stupid if I got killed there. Away we go. Oh, I would have gotten the clear gem if I had waited. Oh, well, it doesn't actually matter. I didn't wait for uh, the TNT to blow up before I went through the portal. And those were the last three crates in the level. Either way, that was a, that was supposed to be a zero death level uh, for a colored gem. None of that is relevant, though, since... We are not doing that 100%. Uh, before we fight the final boss, you do have to go through the Great Hall. It's just that there's literally nothing to the level unless you've collected all the clear gems in the game. Minus one if you get the clear gem in Stormy Ascent. Uh, for every clear gem that you get, a different one of these uh, uh, gem pathways will be solid allowing you to move on to the actual level. Otherwise, the end of the level is just right in front of you. The bad end, I guess. Or the neutral ending. The ending to the game, if you don't 100% it, is not like a bad ending. And now, now that we have beaten the very difficult Great Hall, uh, we can move on to Dr. Neocortex, who is the final boss of the game. And the hint that we get certain energy bolts can be deflected back at him. He's going to fire mostly purplish pink energy bolts at us, uh, and occasionally green ones. We can deflect the green ones at him. Like so. Uh, it's not going to stay that easy. We're going to have to deflect more and more each phase in order to beat him. Also, he's going to change the patterns up. This one's just a basic high-low, and then he'll fire two on either two green ones on either side, and then he'll add another new shot type on this pattern. Which is after you deflect the first green uh, energy bolt, he'll start using these ones that go up and down. And then he'll do a few greens coming up. Perfect. Oh, I missed that one, so I'm going to have to get another phase of this. So, uh, Cortex's old voice actor was a dude named Clancy Brown. And from, I think, to Insanity onward, they brought Lex Lang in to voice Cortex, uh, including for these remakes. I know one reason definitively was because parents wrote Universal and told them that Clancy's depiction of Cortex was too menacing and too scary for kids. So they caved uh, to the demand for someone less intense. And that's the fight, by the way. Uh, and that's idiotic. There's also a little bit of hearsay that they were they were paying Clancy Brown like dirt. And he wasn't happy about that, so they just got someone else to replace him eventually. Like, they may have been looking for an excuse to can him and bring someone new in. And then the parents writing the Universal may have been the perfect excuse. And if I can manage it, this is the part where I am... Oh, man, they know it's up. They're, at, they're doing whole hog and hog wild, uh, the theme. Yeah. Uh, if I can find it, this is where I'm going to append the, uh, the alternate ending. We'll see whether or not I feel like doing that off screen or finding uh, that cutscene. <laughs>
All right, so that was a really good trip back down memory lane. I did stream Crash 1 uh, either, it was it earlier this year? Like very early on in the year? Or was it late last year on PS1? Uh, so I already knew that Crash 1 still held up. I knew that it held up just fine, if not for like a few wrinkles of early 3D platforming. But like, for my money, I think this holds up better than like Mario 64, which granted was even more of a pioneer of 3D platforming. Um, I think this holds up a little bit better. Like, I loved Mario 64 when it came out, but I, I have a harder time going back to play through that than uh, Crash. Either way, though, um, I'm glad to see the remake does justice to one of my favorite childhood series. And, you know, Vicarious Visions, they're some of the best in the business at this, so I shouldn't be that surprised, but there's always like that that lingering concern, that feeling of doubt that they might ruin it because of the really high profile remake or remaster disasters like uh, the Silent Hill HD collection or what they did with Tony Hawk's remaster uh, of Robomoto. They just went and fucked the physics of that up completely. And there are a couple of like little changes in Crash 1 in the Insane Collection compared to the PS1 that we went over, but they, they very rarely come into play and, and make the game worse for it. And then by the time you get to Crash 2 and 3, um, those changes are non-existent because that's how Crash 2 and 3 always were. They just brought Crash 1 more in line with how the physics of the, the slightly later games were. And again, v uh, Vicarious Visions, they're pretty good at what they do, so... Shouldn't be that surprised that this came out so well. I'm just very, very relieved and satisfied that it did. So I can't wait to check out the remake of my two favorite Crash games, which are uh, Cortex Strikes Back, Crash Bandicoot 2, and Warped, which is Crash Bandicoot 3. Those are also on the collection, and I'm gonna get around to doing those. As for when, I'm not really sure. It shouldn't be too, too long. Uh, I took a little bit longer to get around to Crash 1 than I would have liked, but uh, when I don't have any other LPs going on, then when I don't have any other planned ones going on, I'll get back to those two. Hopefully in the fairly <laughs> relatively near future. Um, I'll, I'll hopefully do those back to back. But while the credits roll, I'm just going to say one last time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It makes me feel good, too, reading all the comments. We have a really good community here, so it's not like a chore or a strain to read all the comments. Uh, plus, again, it helps out with the search rankings, helps more people discover my content. And if you want, you can also check the description of this video and every other video like this. They go up every day. Uh, for more links, like a link to my Twitter account, my Patreon, if you want to support the channel in that way, or a tip jar. Uh, there's lots of links in there to dig through playlists as well. And that's going to do it for Crash Bandicoot 1. Thank you all for watching. As always, take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.